bless you friends. Thank you for joining us again for Sunday School on Saturday. We bless and praise God for each and every one of you. Thank God for just another day. Thank God for this wonderful Saturday. Amen. That we are experiencing uh, this first Saturday in June 2020. What a ride this has been so far this year. And we thank God, amen, for the Sunday school on Saturday night. And thank God for all of you joining us. Hopefully all of you receive your books uh, at this time and you're able to join in with us throughout this lesson, The Call of Wisdom. And that lesson is lesson one, The Call of Wisdom for Sunday, June the 7th, amen, 2020, The Call of Wisdom. Before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we want to tell you, thank you now. Lord God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another time. We thank you for the opportunity to share with these thy people. God, it is our prayer now that you would look on us in a mighty way, in a special way. Open up our hearts and our minds to you, broaden our understanding. Give us what to say and how to say it, and we shall praise and magnify you. Give you the glory and the honor. In these and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, the call of wisdom, the call of wisdom. And today our lesson, the Bible basis, comes out of the book of Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, and verses 20 through 22, and verses 32 through 33. That is in the King James Version in which we're going to deal with the call of wisdom. And the Bible truth says that wisdom calls, calls believers to fear, and the word fear there is translated reverence God. So wisdom will call us to reverence God. And the memory verse comes out of King out of Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools, fools despise wisdom and instruction. What a powerful memory verse that is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And our lesson aim is that we would value, by the end of this lesson, we would value godly wisdom. We would cherish godly wisdom to influence our choices. And thirdly, we would apply the biblical principles uh, to make the decisions, apply wise biblical principles to make decisions. Now, what are Proverbs? Proverbs, the word Proverbs come from the Hebrew word meaning to rule or govern. That's right, to rule or govern. Therefore, the Proverbs are a book of sayings designed to rule or govern our conduct, or it may be called heaven rules for men here on earth. This book is part of the wisdom literature of the Hebrews. It is not simply a collection of witty and wise sayings, but, there is, but in it we find a distinct philosophy of life. Now, the book of Proverbs consider two great problems, the moral government of the world and the duty of man in such a world. Now, it looks at the moral government of the world. That is how the world governs and conducts itself. And it looks at how man, what is man's responsibility? What is man's duty in the world? So Proverbs then gives us the wisdom that we need to under that we need in order to make it through this life. The book of Proverbs contrasts the fear of Jehovah and the folly of self-will. If we apply wisdom, we will not fall into foolishness, the foolishness rather, of our self-will. The former is declared to be the foundation for prosperity. The folly of self-will is the foundation of prosperity. However, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, the latter is also denounced as the cause of suffering and death. Now, if we look in the book of Proverbs, there in Proverbs, there is a proverb for every situation, for every person, no matter what he or she was or is. You can find yourself in Proverbs. Whoever you are, whatever you're going through, can I tell you that you can find yourself somewhere in Proverbs, whether you're young, old, rich, poor, uh, whatever single marriage you can find yourself in the book of Proverbs. Some of the um, subjects that are discussed in the book of Proverbs, 
the writer deals with the writers because there are four writers of Proverbs. We'll discuss that at a later time. Uh, some of the uh, books discussed, uh, some of the subjects discussed in Proverbs, they are anger. Uh, deals with anger, the correction of children, the fear of the Lord, um, uh, deals with fools, friendship and dozens, pride, strife, temperance, taming our tongue, and wealth. This wisdom, the wisdom of this book, is not a compilation of human skills written for the mere entertainment of man. So Proverbs was not just written uh, for us just to read, just for the sake of reading, for our mere entertainment, but Proverbs, it is a collection. I mean, a collection of why of wisdom down through the ages, passed from generation to generation. That's what Proverbs are. They're more than just a saying. It is the application to the smallest details of human life, uh, the wisdom which built the heavens and the earth and man to order his happiness for his walk on a safe road in the midst of confusion, evil, and danger. Now, such wisdom demands obedience. It also deals with making our understanding clear. It also gives us a clean heart, and it also gives us a conscience pure uh, in the will form. So if we are to apply, if we were to apply the Proverbs which we read, all of these things will be able to accomplish and do in life only through reading the book of Proverbs. When I was growing up, my grandmother, Mother Sutton, the late Mother Orba Sutton, used to always tell me, son, if you want wisdom, read Proverbs. You need to read Proverbs. I guess because I was young, dumb, crazy, and foolish at the time. She was like, you, you, you're just stupid. Amen. My, I mean, nobody could really talk about you like the late Mother Orba Sutton. Amen. She could bless you and curse you all in the same sentence. Amen. And But when she got through talking to you, there was so much wisdom in the conversation that she would have had with you until she was like, you need to read Proverbs to get wisdom because as a young man, you must have wisdom to go through this life. And we look at the book of Proverbs and often people want to compare Proverbs and Psalms. Now, there is a distinct difference between Proverbs and Psalms. Psalms will focus on devotion. When you look in the book of Psalms, it focuses on devotion. When you look at Proverbs, Proverbs focus on duty. Psalm will have you on your knees. Yes, it will have you praying. But when you look at Proverbs, it, Proverbs gives you the instance. It gives you the instruction that you need to utilize your feet and walk. And Psalms will focus on prayer and praise. And Proverbs focuses on the daily practices of men, how we apply uh, what we know. Now, there are Proverbs for every culture. There are proverbs for every culture. Even the Africans have a proverb, and we use that proverb often. It takes a village to raise a child. We use those proverbs. Proverbs are just wise sayings, and they're things that have been learned down through the ages. And you have to understand, the Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. And when we look at the outline of Proverbs, there's some general rules for guidance here. In chapters 1 through 9, it deals with wisdom and folly. They are contra contrast, uh, contrasted. Excuse me. So it gives you the difference between wisdom and it gives you the difference between folly or foolishness. And then it talks about the wise and the foolish sons. Yes, the wise and the foolish sons. The two are contrasted and compared. The Bible says a wise son make a glad father, but a foolish son is the uh, you know makes his mother cry. And all of these proverbs and all of these sayings are so true. And then it gives us the God-given wisdom for conduct. Uh, and then it gives us a summary of things that are learned by experience. We've often heard the cliche, experience is the best teacher. Well, that may be true. Experience is the best teacher. But can I tell you, experience is a hard teacher. It is a hard teacher, and there are some hard lessons that we learn through experience. Though sometimes it takes experience for some people to get to where they need to be. It takes experience for some people to accept, amen, some things. Amen. You know, it just takes experience. And you tell them, amen, don't go here. Just like you tell a baby. A baby gets near a stove or gets near something that's hot. We used to have wood heaters when I was growing up. And I know some of y'all remember wood heaters and a baby would somebody, sometime get by the wood heater, get by the fireplace, and, and, and you be telling the baby, hot, hot, hot. Don't touch that. Hot, hot. 
hot. But some and the baby said what you hot, 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 but not realizing that it was really hot. That they would really burn until one day they mess around and touch it. And when they touch it, they holler, hot, hot, and they're just crying. But had they only listened to you telling them it was hot, it was hot, it was hot, then they would not have had to go through the experience of experiencing that heat or that pain, but because they would not listen or adhere to the instruction and wisdom of their parents, that's why they experienced the things that they did. That's the same way in life. We have children and we try to instruct them. We try to tell them that you should do this and you should not do that, but yet they want to experience it for themselves and unfortunately, they have to learn the hard way. They have to learn through the folly of the, they have to learn the hard way. And they have to hit their, uh, as the word said, bump their head up against the wall a couple of times. When they bump their head up against the wall, that's when they realize, okay, you know what? Maybe mama and daddy kind of know what they're talking about. Maybe the people who are advising me know what they're talking about. Now, let's get into this lesson, the call of wisdom. Proverbs 1 Verses 1 through 7. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, uh, says to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, look at this now, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, verses 1 through 7 gives us the wisdom for godly living. How should we live? Solomon, Solomon, the son of David, he's talking to his son. He's telling his son, listen, son, I need you to hear what I'm saying to you. I'm not just talking to you just to be talking to you. He said, but I want you to perceive the words of understanding, receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, give subtility to the simple, and to the young man, knowledge and discretion. We must have, as young men, I'm saying young men, I'm still young. Praise God. Thank God I'm still young. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I'm still young. To give to the young man knowledge and discretion. Why is it that Solomon wants to impart to his son knowledge and discretion? Because believe it or not, young people or younger men and younger women, they may not have discretion, even though they may be right in what they're doing, or they may feel like they're right in certain things, uh, but yet wisdom must be applied in everything. You have to learn. We must learn how to apply wisdom in all that we do. Wisdom for godly living. And if you look at the light on the word here, it says Solomon, the author, is addressing his son. His plea is similar to a teacher who is guiding a student. Solomon stresses the benefits of wisdom, which are godly living in the resulting of appropriate action. The teacher provides guidance and, and explains that his intended audience is the young. The term young can refer to both youth based upon age as well as characteristically immature or inexperienced. Now, there are certain things that we are inexperienced in and we need wisdom. We need the wisdom of experience to take us through some things. I was reading a story once about uh, two men, two, two men. One was older and the other was younger. And so they was talk they, and they both had a ax a tree cutting contest. They had a tree cutting contest. And the young man, I mean, he was fast. He was fast. He could really cut down trees. And he could cut down trees so and, and everybody knew that the young man 
was going to beat the old man because the old man had the reputation of being able to cut down more trees than anyone. And the young man wanted to have that same reputation of being able to cut down more trees than anyone. So he challenged the older man to the competition of cutting down the trees. The young man said, okay, we'll do it. I I I'll accept the challenge. And so they started out cutting down trees. And they were just cutting them down. And the young man, he was going at it. I mean, he was really cutting the trees. And he would look back at the old man. It didn't like he was cutting as many trees. But the young man, I mean, he was just a cutting, just a cutting. And at the end of the day, the young man never took a break. He never broke to have lunch. And I mean, he was just cutting trees. Just, and you would have thought that he won. At the end of the day, they counted the number of trees that had been cut down. And the older man had beat the younger man by number of trees. And the younger man asked the older man, he said, what is it? How is it that you beat me? And every time I looked up, you were taking a break. I mean, you were sitting down. He said, I did not take breaks. I barely, I, I just kept working the entire time. And he said, and the old man looked at the younger man and said these words to him. He said, young man, when you saw me sitting down, I just wasn't taking a break. I was sharpening my axe. Isn't that something? I was sharpening my axe. A sharp axe is able to cut through a tree much quicker, faster, and more efficient than a dull axe. Though the young man was stronger, though the young man was quicker, though the young man had more energy than the older man, yet he did not have the wisdom or the experience to sharpen his axe. Mm. Simple, simple. Something so simple calls the young man with strength, energy, and youth to be defeated by an older man because he simply applied wisdom. Now, if we as the people of God can learn to apply wisdom, that is to sharpen our acts, to sharpen our spiritual acts, to sharpen our prayer life, to sharpen our daily walk with God, to sharpen our daily duty to mankind, to sharpen what we do. If we can learn how to do that and apply those principles, can I tell you, we would be much better at what we do. So then, as believers, we've got to learn how to just take the small, simple things. Sometimes the answer is not. The, the scripture says this. It says that the race is not given to the swift, neither is the battle given to the strong. But to him that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. It's not in how fast you can run. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's not in how fast you can run. It's not in how strong you are in fighting but you must be able to endure. Can I tell you that mental endurance sometimes, amen, or all the time, mental endurance is much better than physical endurance. I can endure, if I can endure and go through something mentally, even though physically I can't stand it, but my mind is able to go through it and perceive and think and see a way around it, and God would give me the wisdom of a situation. Can I tell you I'm able then to succeed? So then, look what he says. Look what Solomon says this to his son. The theme of the book of Proverbs is in verse number seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord, the wise fear the Lord. True wisdom comes from God. Those who would not pursue wisdom are called fools, who despise wisdom and instruction because they think they know everything and do not need God. Fools cannot distinguish between good and evil or right and wrong. People who are arrogant and self-sufficient will reject the need to depend on God or anyone else. The fool does not understand that God is the source of all wisdom that God has given everyone who will listen to the ability to be successful. Everyone, I mean everyone, has the ability to to be successful. Oh yes, oh yes. We had to learn a poem when I was younger and the poem title was Equipment. And it begins by saying, it said equipment started off by this. this. I think I had to learn when we were seventh grade. It said these words. It says, figure it out 
for yourself, my lad. You have all that the greatest of men have had. Two arms, two feet, two legs, and two eyes, and a brain to use if you would be wise. With this equipment, they all began. So figure it out for yourself and say that I can. And then down further, it says these words. If you can meet disaster and success and treat these imposters as the same, then you myself would be great one day. Figure it out for yourself, young man. Equipment. Isn't it amazing how God has given all of us He's given every man ability to do something. All of us have the ability to do something. All of us have been given time to do something. The question now comes to mind, what are we doing with the time that God has given us? Are we using our time wisely? Are we investing in what God has called us to? There is a call to wisdom. Anybody can tell you the cliche says it doesn't matter how much money you make at the end of the day is how much you can keep. Oh, yes, that's a proverb. That's why we have to learn how to use this wisdom, how to apply this wisdom in our lives. So the Proverbs of Solomon, the Proverbs of Solomon, and, 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 and he begins to talk to his son and tell his son everything that he must do. Yes. Now, let's look at Proverbs 1, 8 through 11. We must have the wisdom to say no. My son, hear, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they should be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not, <clears throat> excuse me, if they say, come with us. Let us wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. He said, do not consent to that. This is what no good people do. This is what low down people do. This is what fools do. They wait for the innocent to come along. You go out and work all week and they somewhere laying around waiting to rob you. They somewhere hiding in a corner waiting to hit you upside the head or something like that. But that wisdom would teach us. He said, listen, I, I don't want you to get mixed up with the wrong crowd. That's what Solomon was telling his son. Do not get mixed up with the wrong crowd. These instructions are a dire warning. As a father, the writer cautions his son about listening to his peers and being enticed by sin, which has deadly consequences. Having contrasted the stark differences between the wise person who fears the Lord and the fool who despises wisdom, the writer now challenges his son to hear and heed the instruction of his parents. Yes, not uh, the word hear in the Hebrew means shama, not only means to hear with the ear, but also to heed and obey the instructions which are a guide to the life of honor and integrity. And there is this caution. Do not pay attention to sinners who have evil enticements. Sinners plot to do evil. Sinners, sinners will strategize, plot, and plan on how to kill the innocent. We look at what has happened now in our society. We look at all of the civil unrest. We look at protests that have broken out across the nation because of the slaying of a black man uh, the other week. And we look at that. And, 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 and we look at some, some protests have been peaceful and some have become riots. Now, there's nothing wrong with protesting. Don't get me wrong. Hear what I'm saying. People have a right to protest. They should protest because the way the black man has been treated in America is a shame. It's a crime to be black in America. People will stop you for being black in America. Amen. I mean, it's just as simple. And there have been so many heinous crimes against black men. Notice what I said now, black men. And black men have a hard time in America. So then, and, and it has caused so much civil unrest. Now, you have to understand something. 
the strikes and the riots that are happening now that are happening nationwide that caused the president to be uh, moved to the secret bunker and how protests are at the White House, how they're marching the streets all across the nation, New York, California, just rioting. Now, you have to understand now what has happened. People have been locked up in their home for the last two months. Children ain't been going to school. Children been getting on their nerve. They've been at home for the last several months. They ain't got no job, ain't got no money. Stuff ain't coming in the way they want to. They're just uneasy, and there's so much unrest. However, let me say this. The majority of the protesters who are protesting are peaceful. They've been peaceful about what they're doing. Now, you can find the rioters here in this 10th verse. I'm sorry, in this, this 10th and 11th verse, uh, it says, My son, look, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us wait for blood. Let us look privately for the innocent without cause. So in other words, Solomon was saying that there are those who would take a perfectly good opportunity to do right and then do wrong. And I think that's what has happened with rioters. They've taken a perfectly good opportunity to voice their opinion the right way, but then there are those who are mixed up in the crowd that's doing wrong. You've got to understand that when you get in a crowd, there are all types of people in a crowd. There are some for good and some for bad. Let's not be upset with the people for protesting. You have a right to protest. We should protest. Amen. But when my protest and my civil disobedience gets to the point that I'm destroying other people's property, then we have an issue. Amen. We have a problem then because wisdom teaches me I should not destroy anything that's not mine. I should not destroy anything that I did not pay for. Amen. That's just the bottom line. That's just the truth of the matter. So we must have the wisdom to say no. We must understand when someone is telling us right and when someone is telling us wrong. The scripture says this, that there is safety in the multitude of counsel. Safety. There's safety in the multitude of counsel. I cannot allow. I will not allow. I must not allow anyone to counsel me who is not providing godly counsel. Who's not helping me to get through what I need to get through the right way? Oh, yes. When you read Proverbs, you can find yourself in the book of Proverbs. So we must have the wisdom to say no. Now, wisdom is personified. Let's look at Proverbs 1, uh, 20 through 22. Wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the streets. Yes, she cried in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttered her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? Uh-huh. And the scorners delight their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. Oh, yes, oh, yes. We have got to choose wisely. Wisdom is personified. Wisdom personified, which means that wisdom has human characteristics. Wisdom is shouting out to the simple ones in the streets on the corners and at the entrance of the cities. Wisdom asks, how long will they continue to act foolish and be destroyed? Wisdom is not hidden. God is calling for the foolish to change course and live. Wisdom is a feminine noun. A woman who is urgently calling out and pleading to the simple and to the foolish, what she has to say is so important that she has to make sure that she is heard. In the street, she raises her voice above the noise of complacency and contempt, above ignorance and insolence. She does not limit her call to the neighborhood side streets. She also goes to the chief place of concourse in the main street and makes her speech. She proceeds from there to the city gates, which is the seat of the government. She takes her message wherever people are and poses her searing question to three groups of people. She asks a question, how long will the simple and the scorners continue to be set in their ways? How long will fools actively avoid knowledge? If they respond to wisdom's rebuke and take her counsel, they will become wise. 
So the final two verses summarize the available choices and the consequences of those choices. The simple, the naive, and those who turn away and reject ladies' wisdom call, hate knowledge, and refuse to fear the Lord. Fools suffer the consequences of their actions, and what they consider prosperity actually destroys them. The folly of both the simple and the fool ultimately result in death. In contrast, heeding to the way of wisdom leads to safety and peace. We need wisdom, y'all. We must have wisdom to go through everything that we go through. We've got to have, you should learn. We should learn from every experience. Yes, my grandmother told me one day, my son had this son. I was getting ready to whip him. She said, oh, don't whip him. Don't whip him. Don't whip him. I said, mama, why? Why? She said, oh, whipping don't do no good. Whip you. Just talk to him. Talk to him. And I said, well, mama, you know what? I said, when people get old, they're trying to get to heaven. When they're young, they just do what they want to do. I said, you're just trying to get to heaven. Boy, she just started laughing. And I, you know, amen. But experience will teach you some things. Age will teach you some things. Yes, along with age. Along with age comes wisdom and experience. Well, along with age should come wisdom and experience. One of the worst things I want to see is an old fool. How in the world can you live to be 60, 50, 70 years old and still be foolish at that age? Because you did not take heed. You did what you wanted to do. You would not adhere to instruction. You would not, not adhere to wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom personified. Now, choose wisely. Light on the word. The contrast between the consequences of folly and wisdom set the tone for the rest of Proverbs. These stocks contrast also set the tone for our lives. Making wise decisions and heeding the call of wisdom propel our lives on a path of wise, skillful living that will be a blessing to everyone we encounter. If we listen to God's wisdom, we will live in safety and peace, no matter what the future holds. God will guide us as we face life's challenges if we ask for wisdom and determine to choose wisely. Yes, God will guide us. Saints, we need to call. We need to take heed to the call to wisdom. Life is full of choices. Every day we make choices about whether to go to work and what, what, do we, what do we do when we get to work. Some people go to work to rest. Some people go to work. I don't know what they do when they get there. They ain't working. Amen. They just, they just go there. How can you go to work all day and not work at all? Some people go to work and don't do, nothing, don't do anything. But we have to make wise choices. Whether we go to work, what to do at work, what to eat, how to comb our hair what clothes to put on, when they go to bed, and so on. We make hundreds of choices with little forethought, but life often gives us difficult decisions that require the wisdom of God. Oh, the scripture says in the book of James, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. So I implore you today, friends, students of this Sunday school lesson, if you are lacking wisdom, all you got to do is ask God. Choices include how will we live as single people or whom we will marry. Both decisions hold unimaginable consequences. Additional choices include whether or not we will raise our children in the fear of the Lord, and our decision may be a matter of life or death. We also make decisions about our environment in our churches and communities and in our nation and world. Only by prayer. The guidance of the Holy Spirit, the study of God's word, and wise counsel will we make wise decisions that result in peace and safety. We must make, we must make the right choice. When we have to make life-altering decisions, the burdens can have us feeling in inadequate. If we evaluate life situations in light of God's character and purposes, we will make decisions guided by divine wisdom. Whatever the choice, we must rely on God for help. We need to read and study the Bible, pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, fellowship with believers at church, 
and listen and obey God's word. Confide in Christians who have had shared or similar experiences and pray some more and act in accordance with what the Holy Spirit guides us to do. I've learned down through the years, I've learned down through the years, I've learned down through the years how to pray for others, but I've also learned how to pray for myself. And my prayer has been, Lord, just make me better. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better man of God. I want to be a better pastor. I want to be a better son. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better husband. I just want to be a better neighbor, a better person. And I believe that if we pray the prayer, Lord, make us better. He would give us the wisdom on how to be better, on how to become better. The call of wisdom. And back again to our memory verse, it says these words, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Well, I certainly hope tonight that we've said something to encourage your hearts, something that will give you the strength just to go a little further. We bless and thank God for this Sunday school lesson, the call of wisdom, and we thank God for all of you joining us. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, it is our prayer now that you look upon these thy people and this thy servant. Lord, as we've entered into your word, God, we pray that you would help us to apply wisdom. Help us to take heed to the call of wisdom. Help us to be wise in the things that we do, in the decisions that we make, in the name of Jesus. Forsake us not. Do not leave us by ourselves, but give us strength every day of our lives. Lord, help us to be wise and not fall prey to the enemy. In Jesus' name. And we'll give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, these and other blessings we're asking in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, I thank you for joining us tonight. And remember, we will be back same time, same place next week. Until that time, be blessed is my prayer for you. God bless you. Thank you for watching Zion Temple Ministries. Be sure to tune in to worship with us via Facebook Live and YouTube each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Facebook Live Stream and every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. for our Tuesday night teaching Bible study. You can also check out our worship opportunities by visiting our website at www.ztministriestn.com. If you would like to make contributions to the ministry, you can donate via Cash App or by searching Zion Temple Church of God in Christ via Givelify. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon.